Hello and uh, good evening to you. My name is Apostle Larry Dokeno and uh, it's a joy to be coming your way right now live on this channel Majesty Christian TV Network. What a great day to be in and uh, I want us to share with a prayer before we proceed. Amen. And Father God, once again, we count ourselves blessed to be hearers of your word. We pray. Like Jesus told Mary, she said, he said to her, concerning her, she has chosen the good part. Let all who hear this word as it comes receive the good part. I thank you for the utterance to speak clearly and that my hearers will understand what you want me to share with them. I give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Welcome once again. My name is Apostle Larry. And uh, if you want to follow um, the series that I have done on the seventh month and its significance, the power behind this period, I recommend that you go to our, our YouTube channel, Majesty TV Network, and, uh, and you can browse and select and follow the whole series, I'm sure you'll be blessed mightily. Well, this hour, I just want to use the next few minutes to uh, finish up um, what I have been sharing in the last two sessions on what I titled the law, the law and the power of the number seven, or the Sabbath, the law and the power of the Sabbath or of the number seven. Amen? When I say the Sabbath, I'm actually referring to the number seven, this period uh, whereby, you know, we are observing, uh, you know, the significance of, of the seventh month, the seventh day, and etc., etc. Okay. Now, um, I believe I've shared a lot, a lot of information. So this will be a kind of a recap of, of, of you know, the most significant things for you to remember so that uh, you will keep this at the back of your mind and for you to understand the dynamics of the workings of the Lord. Now, uh, the number seven actually stands for spiritual perfection uh, and, and also for fullness or completion. It is also the number of the covenant and the number of the Holy Spirit. So the number seven really is relevant, finds application in the things of God in spiritual things, but also in the in natural things. See, so it is actually the second perfect number. The first perfect number being three, and uh, seven actually is the second perfect number. In Hebrew, the number is called Shiva or Shiva, uh, from the root word Shava or Shaba or Shiva, which means to be full. So it's good to just for you to have the an idea of the root. Of some of this of this word, uh, because it it perv it pervades the whole uh, Bible. Now, the Bible tells us that God rested on the seventh day uh, after He created um, uh, the earth and the heavens, as we're told. God rested on the seventh day, so we can see that the number is so awesome and so powerful in the sense that God did. God founded a lot of things on the principle of the number seven. Now, I began to uh, talk about, or I titled this message, The Law and the Power of the Sabbath, or of the number seven. Now, when I mention the law, I want, I'm implying that God specifically had enshrined this number in the law he gave to the Israelites. And so, in as, as a matter of fact, it means it has been enshrined in the Holy Scriptures. And let me just quickly mention that in Exodus chapter 31, from the verse 13, it says, And tell the people of Israel, keep the Sabbath, the day of rest, because it is a sign between me and you for all time to come, to show that I, the Lord, have made you my own people. You must keep the day of rest because it is sacred. Whoever does not keep it but works on that day is to be put to death. Alright. Now, I'll leave it at that. If you 
if you go through the scriptures you will find out that one of the reasons why the lord had quarrels let me if i use the word quarrel you know a quarrel may be between two human beings but one of the reasons why the lord you know had been very upset with the israelites one of the you know recurring reasons has been because they dishonored and they desecrated the sabbath you see so which means that god places such a high premium on on honoring the sabbath and if it places such a high premium on it it means that it does carry some some great blessings and some great influence upon our lives and our work with him praise the lord and so i just want us to realize that the lord really factored and brought into almost nearly everything you know the importance and the significance of the number seven we also know that um the 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 candlestick which was in the tabernacle and uh, also in the temple um in the in the what do you call it the um the holy of holies in the holy place i beg your pardon of the temple um that tabernacle the the, the, the candlestick actually had uh, uh seven branches if you like see so here we see the number seven coming up again and there were also seven classes of furniture in the tabernacle see we have uh, the bronze uh, the sacrificial altar the bronze laver the golden menorah that's a candlestick the the golden table uh, of the bread of his presence the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat itself the mercy seat being the cover of the the box which is the ark itself isn't it awesome now it may interest you to notice that um, the temple was built in six six days sorry the tabernacle was built in six days and was dedicated on the seventh day we find it in exodus chapter 40 verse 17. so is it just coincidence that this is that that way there is a pattern that god wants us to be aware of and i believe that by observing or by being conscious of that pattern we we avail ourselves to special uh let's say workings of the favor of god upon our lives hallelujah if he says rest on the seventh day don't work it means that i'll take care of you eh? i i mean you don't need to work on the seventh day you don't need to bother yourself on the seventh month the seventh year because i will give you enough supplies to take care of you i find it so awesome so powerful so that means other things apart from physical provisions will be available unto us as we respect and honor the seventh day as we hallow this sabbath day as the lord has told us say i hear you amen and then we also know that king solomon took seven years to build a temple in jerusalem that beautiful temple they all became too proud of you know they loved it and you know uh, you know david had to tell jesus have you seen the temple how beautiful it is <laughs> and jesus told them well it's beautiful now by the time it's coming it will no more be there not even one stone will be upon you know will be upon another everything we brought very low so the temple took seven years to build first second kings sorry but first first Kings chapter six from the verse 37 to 80 first kings chapter <laughs> six now also it's important to notice that uh, there are seven annual holy feasts observed under the law seven and you wonder why this seven there must be something powerful about this number hallelujah i just want to kind of sensitize you to become aware you see when you fall into the realm the scheme the frame of the operation of god it becomes very easy to receive miracles you know, Captain Kuman used to say that if you want somebody to be healed, just um, you know, um, you know, expose them to Jesus. You know, let the atmosphere of Jesus be around, and when that person that person enters that atmosphere, that person it will be easy to heal that person. Hallelujah! And I believe the same applies to what we're talking about. You know, when you understand this season and what God has made. To happen and to be to be functional, eh? uh, the graces which go with the season. Once once you are in that sphere, 
it becomes very easy to receive certain breakthroughs. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm, I'm just stressing and trying to let you realize that, hey, God didn't do these things for nothing. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So there are seven annual holy feasts which were observed under the law. And we find this in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus 23 gives us the whole listing of the, all the uh, feasts and how they must be observed for how many days. Some of them, you have to do them for seven days. You know, we cannot go into all of that now. But you can read it up by yourself. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23 from verse 1 onwards. Now, the feast of the Passover is the first month of the liturgical year. That's the, the holy year, if you like. I mean, the, the, the church year. But it's the seventh month of the civil year. So clearly, the civil year and the liturgical year, the church year, are not the same. You know, that which is the first um, in the church year, uh, uh, it's actually, you know, the seven in the civil civil year cal calendar. Now, um, I hope you understand that. So, the seventh month, like we are talking about the seventh month, which is July now, that is, you know, when the Feast of Passover is celebrated. Okay. Then, the Feast of the Tabernacle completes the cycle of seven a cycle of holy days in the seventh month of the liturgical year. So in the seventh month, like in the month of July, when they celebrate the Feast of the Tabernacles, that is actually the very last feast. The last feast we they celebrate. Remember I mentioned that they do celebrate seven of those feasts. So, so feast, of feast of Tabernacles is the seventh one. Okay, so the list goes on and on and on, you know, but just to give you an idea of how the scriptures have, you know, um, clearly, you know, marked the number seven out as so unique. And I shared with us earlier on how in, the, um, you know, even in nature, we see that, you know, things have been arranged this way, like the period it takes a woman to, to, to a woman's pregnancy to mature to fullness. You know, we count them in weeks. Huh? Uh, is it 36 weeks or 39 weeks, something like that? Um, you know, the same with the animals, you know, and the insects. All of these are, you know, they're counted in weeks. Uh, so, which means seven day, you know, time slots. Hallelujah. And one other interesting thing, maybe I just want to share with you before I, I finish, is that we find that in the book of Revelation, there's a number of there's mention ma mention made of seven series of sevens. We have, for example, uh, the seven uh, the seven churches, the seven letters, the seven spirits, uh, the the golden uh, lampstands, uh, the seven stars, the seven seals, and the seven homes. You see, you wonder why all these sevens? There is a reason to it. There is a purpose to it. And don't just take it literally and just don't take it casually. The workings of God, you know, have a connection with this number. And so when you when you connect yourself with that kind of rhythm, I believe that miracles will just be happening here and there. Now, I just want to quickly mention um, about the seven churches in the book of Revelation, beginning with uh, Revelation chapter um, 2. We see that the Lord Jesus wrote to those seven churches in Asia to, uh, as it were, speak of their condition and to, um, to let them know what they were lacking and what they needed to do better uh, so that he would not, you know, uh, as it were, deny them of their entitlement. But the Lord wanted to, as we know, He wants to present to Himself a church without spot or wrinkle. Okay, so He gave uh, John the Revelator the the word, a message for those seven churches, and that remember that was a prophetic revelation, and I believe that that refers to also us who are today, uh, 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 you know, who are in this era. So the church age. The church, those seven letters, I believe, wasn't only specifically for the churches in those regions, but it was also uh, indicative and also relevant for 
our church age of today. Amen. So there were seven churches mentioned in that letter. Uh, there was a church in Ephesus to whom uh, John the Revelator wrote. There's a church in uh, Smyrna. That's number two. There's a church in Pergamum. That's uh, number three. And then there was a church in uh, Thyatira. That's number four. There's a church in uh, Sardis. That's number five. So church in what Philadelphia, church that's number six, and finally there's a church in Laodicea. Okay, so those are seven churches, and we see in Revelation many other things the Lord reveals to us, reveals through the Apostle John to us, and we get to see how he had, you know, he speaks. And he arranges all these things according to the number seven. Well, what an awesome, 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 awesome thing. So incredible to behold and to realize that, you know, God had really given us useful and powerful hints by which we can succeed and by which we can, we can obtain certain graces without any struggle. I believe this is one of such seasons. Now, in the next few days, as before the, this seven month ends, I want you to avail yourself of all the graces that God has prepared for you in this month. This is a month of release, a month of freedom, a month of provision, a month of rest, a Sabbath month. God has ordained great things for you. He says you must not go out to gather food <laughs> on the seventh day. They must make sure they just rest. He will take care of the seventh day. I prophesy to you. That God will take care of your business, take care of your needs, take care of the, the things that, you, that are bothering you. God will give you rest in this seventh month. Receive your portion. Receive your blessing in Jesus' name. I just want to close with, 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 you know, with this, uh, uh, you know, this little over, overview that I've given to you. But to emphasize the fact that we should become sensitive like the children of Issachar were. The Bible says that they, 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 those children, they were different because uh, uh, they knew what ought to be done. They were more discerning. They were more conscious of timing. And so they knew what ought to be done. Are you conscious of the season you are in? You know, most people are not that sensitive and conscious of the seasons they are living in. And so they easily miss out on divine appointments and divine visitations. Are you hearing me? So this, I believe, this month is the month of divine visitation because God has already pre-programmed the things which must happen. I prophesy to you and I pray a release, supernatural release into your life of the great things that God has for you in this Sabbath month. Let the law and the power of the Sabbath, this seventh month, unfold and hit your life and fill your life bountifully and boundlessly in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to just conclude, you know, this beautiful set of, you know, teachings and exhortations, you know, just with what I've just shared with you. And I pray that it will sink and it will, be, it will make an impact in your life and that you will become more sensitive to the dealings of God when it comes to times and seasons. The Lord bless you richly. It's been fun sharing this with you. And I look forward to, well, coming your way again next week uh, with something, you know, equally interesting. God bless you and I love you. Bye-bye.